Hello everybody, in today's video we are going to be looking at leet code problem number 1575, count all possible routes. So the problem description says, you are given an array of distinct positive integers where the locations at each index represent the position of a city at that index. We're also given three integers, start, finish, and fuel, representing the starting city, the ending city, and the initial amount of fuel we have. So at each step, we can pick any city that is not the current city we're at, and then we can go there. When we go to that city, we reduce the amount of fuel we have by the absolute value of those respective cities. And then they want us to know that the fuel cannot become negative at any point in time, and we are allowed to visit each city more than once if we want. And then finally, what the, the problem is really asking is to return the number of possible routes from start to finish. And the answer might be large, so we want to return it mod 10 to the 9th plus 7. Let's take a look at how this problem works. So in this first example, I've, I've drawn it out for you. I'd, I'd like to just go over how we can read this problem. So we're given an array, and I, it's called cities here. In this first example, it's 2, 3, 6, 8, 4. And I've drawn in yellow the indices that represent these. And then our start is index 1, our end is index 3, and we have 5 units of fuel to start out with. So what we're really interested in is starting at uh, this, this index 1 right here and ending at index 3. So we want to go from this 3 to 8, this, this gap right here. But we have 5 units of fuel to do it. And we want to know how many ways can we do that. And the answer ends up being 4. Why? Well, I'll just show you the, the possible ways we can do it. We could go from 1 to 3 directly. That ends up using 5 units of fuel. See, 1 to 3, it uses 5 units of fuel because the absolute difference, the absolute value between 3 and 8 is 5. We could also go from 1 to 2 to 3. So if we went from 1 to 2, that's going from 3 to 6, that uses 3 units of fuel. And then from 2 to 3, that uses 2 units of fuel. Uh, the difference between 6 and 8 is 2. Another way we can do this is from going from 1 to 4 to 3. Going from 1 to 4 uses 1 unit of fuel because the difference between 3 and 4 is 1. And going from 4 to 3, this is, remember, index 4 to 3, uses 4 units of fuel. So we've used 5 now total. And then the last way to do this is going from 1 to 4 to 2 to 3. We already saw going from 1 to 4 uses 1 unit of fuel. Going from 4 to 2 uses 2 units of fuel. And going from 2 to 3 also uses 2 units of fuel. So you might, you might notice here that the starting number in these chains here is always 1. And the ending is always 3. And that should be the case because we have to start at 1 and we want to end at 3. The question it was asking us how many ways can we get from 1 to 3 without going under on our fuel and the answer was 4. Here are all four ways. Let's look at another example now. So in this next example the cities are 2, 1, and 5 and I've again written the index below each city. Our starting and ending point are both index 0 and we have 3 units of fuel. So what are the possible ways we can do it here? So I'll write down the path and how much fuel it uses to do that path. So one way to do this is just to do zero. If I start and end at zero, well, I got to where I wanted to go, and I got there starting where I need to start from, and I've used zero gas, zero fuel to do that. Another way I can do this is going from zero to one to zero. And how much fuel does that use? Well, going from 0 to 1 uses one unit of fuel, and going from 1 to 0 uses another unit of fuel for two units of fuel. Notice how I didn't use all my fuel. I still have one left over. 
and that's okay because I was able to get from where I had to start from where I from where I needed to go use using less than the amount of fuel I needed to and that's okay I don't need to use all my fuel I just can't use more than I'm given so let's look at the algorithm a little more closely now how this works in a more general case if my cities are some c1 to cn and my indices are from 0 to n minus 1 I have a start point of a and end point of b and I have f units of fuel well what I want to do is I, I want to choose a city. So I'll choose a city. And I don't really have much of an option for the first one. And then I'll, I'll go there. When I go there, I have to update my fuel. So there's two cases. Case one, I'm out of fuel. If I'm out of fuel, that means there's no solution. That would mean I tried traveling from say zero to one and in the process my fuel became negative. If that happens I can't go there that's not a legal path. Another thing that could happen case two is I could be at my ending city. I could have a right I could arrive where I want to be if that's the case then I have one more solution and if I'm in case two as long as I'm not in case one then I want to continue going even if I've arrived at my destination, I want to keep going because I still might have more fuel. So I want to, from here now with my updated fuel, is travel to every remaining city. Except myself. I don't want to go back to myself. Let's look at this algorithm in action now. So in this example here, I, my start is zero, my end is three, and I have 10 units of fuel. I don't really have any choices for where I can start, so I have to start at zero. When I, when I do that, I have three choices from where to go. I can go to one, two, or three. And at each of these states, I'm actually, I'm gonna write zero comma 10, so I'm at city zero with 10 units of fuel. When I go to city one, how many units of fuel do I have? Well, I would have nine because going from zero to one burns one unit of fuel. Going from zero to two, I also have nine units of fuel. And going from zero to three, I would have two units of fuel left. Now from here, each of these problems can be broken up into its own problem. So for example, what if I said the start was one, the end was still three, and the fuel was nine? Well, that's, that's the problem I'm solving when I go to city one first. So let's look at that. If I go, if I'm at city one, I can go to city zero and then I would have eight units of fuel. I can go to city number two. I burn two units of fuel, so I'd have seven after that. Going from one to three, I would have, that would be nine, that would, that would burn nine units of fuel, so I would be at three with zero left. And then likewise, each of these problems can be broken down just, just for an example, I'll look at this last one, three zero. This is saying starting at city three, I have to get to city three using zero fuel. So I'll just write that start is three, end is three, and fuel is zero. This is a pretty easy problem. I'm, I need to start at some city, but I, I need to end at that same city and I can't use fuel. So obviously there's only one way I can do that. 
So when I'm at the three zero state, I would return one back to whoever asked me for that answer. This, this tree can end up having repeated subproblems in it. And because of that, it's a popular, a popular technique. What we can do is we can memoize the answer. So every time I compute an answer, after I've done this one nine tree traversal, I'll just store the answer. The answer will be maybe something like, we'll just call it X. And then I know if any of these other subproblems ever gives me a one nine state, I can just return the X. Let's take a look at how this might look in code. The first thing I'm gonna do when I code this is write my own DFS algorithm. I need to know the locations, my current location, my goal location, and how much fuel I have. The first case we talked about was if our fuel ever drops below zero, if that's the case, I'll just return zero because there's no solution. And I'll make a result variable to hold on to the answer. If the current city I'm at is equal to where I need to go, then I have one more solution. And then finally, I need to visit every other city. So I will do for int i equals zero to the length of the array. If the city I'm planning to visit is the current one I'm in, I'm just gonna skip that and move on to the next city. But I'm gonna calculate the cost of how much it costs to go to that city. And I can do that with the absolute value of this locations at my current location, and then take the difference between that and the location I wanna go to. And then I'm actually gonna go there call this next trip and I'm just going to call the algorithm again but instead of being at the current city I'm going to start from city I my goal city is going to stay the same and my fuel is going to go down by the cost that I just calculated that's going to give me some answer so I'll add it to my result and then I can at the end return that result. But I missed something and that was the mod. So I'm going to create a mod variable up here because the answers can be large. I have to remember to mod out by this. It was 10 to the 9th plus 7 as my mod. So every time I add to my result, I'll also mod by the appropriate value. So then all I need to do is just call my algorithm and let it do the work. Locations from the start to the finish using that much fuel. So if we run this, we should get the right answer for the test case. Yep. But the problem is if I were to submit it, it wouldn't be fast enough. So I'm gonna create a caching variable, a two-dimensional array. And inside of the constructor, I'll instantiate it to a new integer array. But what are the sizes of these? Well, I have n locations, so locations.length, that sounds about right to me that I can go to, and how much fuel can I have? Fuel is going to be some positive number. Let's say it's it's six. I would want to have six plus one. I'd want to have seven possible states for fuel to be in because I can have zero as a possible state. So however much fuel I have plus one, and the plus one is because I have the zero state as well. And what I'm going to quickly do here is instantiate everything to negative one. I can do that using this method called arrays.fill. I can pass it an array and a value, and it sets every value in that array to whatever I want. So now, when I'm in my depth first search algorithm, after I've checked if it's a bad state, if, I've, if I have a legitimate amount of fuel, I can check to see if I've computed this before. So if the current city I'm in and the fuel, with the, with the amount of fuel I'm in, 
is not negative 1, that means I've calculated this answer before and I can just return it. If not, I need to actually do the computation. And, but then I want to remember the answer. So I will say at that current city with this amount of fuel, I will be that result. And let's just double check that this algorithm still works. Looks like I spelled locations incorrectly. Let's try this again. Yep, that looked to work okay. I'll try submitting it and see if we get the right answer. Yep, we end up getting a successful run. By caching these answers, we're able to save a lot on the computation time. And the reason we are doing the locations and the fuel is because those are the only two variables changing. The city I'm in, the current city, and the amount of fuel are the two variables that change. And it's locations.length because I, if, if locations.length, say, is 10, then I have 10 possible cities to go in to. And then it fuel plus 1 because I have however much fuel they give me, but I also have the zero state, so I add 1 to include that zero state. Let's talk about the time complexity real quick. So for time, and let's do the space first. I actually think I want to do the space first. How much extra space am I using? Well, I'm creating a new int array, and it's n for the number of locations times the number of fuel. So it would be O of n times f. But how long does this algorithm take now? What's the time complexity? And I know that inside of this depth for search algorithm I have, I have this two-dimensional array array of size n by f. So I can expect depth for search to be called n times f times. And within each depth for search call, I have an n for loop. I have a for loop going from 0 to n. So it's O of n times f for the number of depth for search calls I make times an extra n because each call has an iterative for loop which is really just O of n squared times f. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please comment and I'll be happy to help. Or if you have any video suggestions, also please let me know.